What's up guys, Sagi here and welcome to another Tech Gear Talk. Today we're gonna to take a look at the DJI Ronin SC. You may have already seen my review of the Ronin S where I also discuss seeing and playing around with the Ronin 2. Both are great gimbals, but the issue that some people have with them is that they're a little big and heavy. What's great about the Ronin SC is that DJI packed some of the great features of the larger gimbals in a smaller and lighter system, which is much better suited for small DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. Now on top of that, they also added some fantastic features that I didn't really expect at this price point. I've been using different size gimbals for a while now with different size cameras, and I appreciate having the right tool for the job. As I mentioned, the SC is designed for smaller and lighter cameras with a max payload of 4.4 pounds or two kilograms. So it's not something that I plan on using with the C100 Mark II, but it will work great with my Sony a7 III, my a6400, or any of my smaller Canon or Fuji cameras. You do need to take into account the fact that weight is only one consideration and camera body and lens size is another. There were combinations that I simply couldn't balance or get to work, even though they were within the allotted payroll. And that's simply because the gimbal couldn't balance or the camera would hit the back motor. Sometimes the camera is too big or the lens is too long and there isn't enough space to move the camera back far enough to actually get it to balance, or when you start a tilt, the top or back of the camera hits the gimbal. So feel free to ask me in the comment section about any specific combination that you plan on using, and I'll do my best to help. Just like with the Ronin S, I wanted to really use this gimbal for a while before publishing this review, so let's get going. Taking a look at the box, as you would expect, you get a solid polystyrene case, which will definitely protect the SC while transporting it. It's not a hard shell case like the one that I bought from my Ronin M, but if I'm taking the Ronin SC with me on a job or I just go out shooting and traveling by car, this case does work great. Everything fits nice and tight and there are some extra small compartments which I always appreciate. What I like about the SC is that because it's smaller, I was able to remove the tripod feet then attach it to my bag so when I was ready to shoot, it was already balanced. I'm not going to do a full balancing tutorial because again, there's millions of those out there, but if you run into any trouble, let me know in the comment section and I'll definitely try to help you out. Balancing is pretty straightforward. You just mount the grip, attach the tripod feet, and then stand the Ronin SC up. And go ahead and mount the quick release plate to your camera and then lock it into place where the camera is pretty balanced as far as front to back. Now go ahead and balance the tilt, roll, and pan, and you're good to go. And what's fantastic about the SC is that each axis can be locked and unlocked. So it makes the entire process so much faster since you can lock the ones that you're not working on at the moment, and you don't have to worry about the camera sliding. And this made it really easy, and as far as balancing, this is probably one of the easiest gimbals I've used. These little locking mechanisms also make it super easy to transport the Ronin SC because you can lock it in a flat position and you don't have the different components flopping around. It might seem like a small feature, but having used and transported a lot of gimbals, it's definitely one that made my life easier. Once I got everything balanced, I was excited to see it in action. But as usual, I had to register the device with the Ronin app. But since I already had it installed from the Ronin S, it only took a few seconds. Next, I went through the auto tuning feature, which is super simple to do with the app. And I also ran the balance test, got the results that the balance on the tilt, roll, and pan was excellent, and I was out the door. The first thing that I noticed about the Ronin SC was that it was lighter than the S, and I mean noticeably lighter. Without the camera, it weighs about 2.75 pounds or 1.25 kilograms, and that's with the handle and the tripod feet, which I pretty much always keep attached. But even though it's small and light, the motor seemed quite strong, and I was still able to make small adjustments like the position of the fully articulating screen without having to rebalance the SC. And because it's so light, I definitely felt like I could shoot for longer periods of time without needing to rest. So it's kind of funny, and if you haven't used a gimbal before, whenever you pick one up, even one of the larger ones, they never really feel that heavy. And you're standing there thinking, I can shoot with this thing for hours. Then like five minutes into carrying a Movi Pro with a cinema camera, you go like, vest please, 
So again, the lighter weight was a big plus and I really appreciate it since I test so many cameras and I don't always want to take a large gimbal with me when I don't need to. Now, just like with the Ronin S, the roll motor was moved down and it actually creates a nice amount of space to work with. And for the most part, as long as I wasn't using a really long lens, I was able to flip the screen down and still be able to tilt and pan. And I already mentioned this earlier, but again, make sure that the camera and lens combo that you plan on using will actually work with the SC. When it came to actual use, I tried different cameras. I tried my Sony a7 III and 6400, a Fuji X-T3 and X-T30, the Canon SL2 and M50, and then a few older models. And I got really stable results with all of them. I still think there's a little more movement than with the Ronin S because the gimbal is smaller and lighter, but I'm happy to trade that for the additional weight. And again, from my perspective, if I plan on using a larger system, I'll just wear a vest. I was really impressed with the software and the circuitry that DJI implemented with the SC and the stabilization was outstanding. Even when I was using it in flashlight mode or underslung or with active track, which I'll talk about later on, I didn't notice any of the micro jitters that I sometimes got from older single handle gimbals. I mentioned earlier that I pretty much kept the tripod feet attached at all times. And that's because it creates a longer handle which was easier to use with two hands. And I was also able to put it down whenever I needed a rest. And just like with the Ronin S, there is an advantage over something like the Ronin M, which I can't put down unless I get a ring set up for it with feet. I will say that I'm spoiled by my larger rig with my vest, and I still love the ability to just be able to let go and rest whenever I want to, but that does come at the cost of having to put the vest on every time I want to use it, Whereas with the Ronin SC, I can just grab it and start shooting. Another thing I wanted to mention, which was also true with the Ronin S, is that even after using it for a few hours, taking the camera off and then putting it back on, I didn't notice the horizon shift. With some other gimbals, I start out with everything balanced and looking good. But after a little bit of shooting, you start seeing the horizon shift. So it always looks like you're shooting at an angle. And depending on how bad it was and what resolution I was shooting at, there were times when my footage was unusable. And that was not something that I experienced with the SC. Now, overall, I really liked the actual shooting experience and it felt very natural. The trigger in the front works just like you would expect it to with two clicks to recenter three clips to alternate between front facing and selfie mode. The double click to recenter is also something that hasn't always worked for me with other gimbals. With the SC, it seemed to always work whether I was holding it upright, flashlight, or in underslung modes. You can also hold it down to lock the position in place. So if I'm starting high and then going low or vice versa, I can lock it get the portion of the shot that I want, then when I wanna continue in follow mode, just let it go. And this is super flexible because if you're on a bike or a skateboard, you can hold it down and get that perfect steady follow and then quickly transition to a more conventional follow mode. There are also times when you may wanna quickly switch to sports mode. So for example, you're slowly and smoothly following someone and then you need to immediately respond to some fast action. When that happens, you can just hold down the M button, which is right next to the record button, and now the gimbal is super responsive and will let you very quickly follow quick action. And then once again, you just let it go and you're back in the mode that you had it in before. When I was using it with compatible cameras like the a7 III, it was really nice to connect the camera to the Ronin SC and be able to start and stop recording without having to touch the camera. And again, just like with the Ronin S, it's super intuitive and I think even a beginner can pick this up and then just get used to it very quickly without having to use the app. Speaking of the app, you can save up to three user modes and then easily switch between them by clicking on the M button that's on the grip. I've said it before, but I'm a big fan of this app. And I think DJI did a really good job with the user interface. It's simple to use and it has a nice balance of features and functionality. You can easily auto tune the Ronin SC you can change the motor settings, do time-lapse, motion-lapse. You can actually remotely control the gimbal from the app using a joystick interface, which is kind of nice when you want super smooth pan and tilt control and the gimbal is mounted on a tripod. Another super cool feature is that you can control the movement of the gimbal by moving your phone, similarly to what you can do with the Freefly Movi Pro and Mimic. 
You activate this by going to the app, clicking on create, then selecting force mobile, and then enable force mobile. But what I realize is that since the footage is not shown on the phone, it's not super useful unless you're literally standing behind the camera so that you can see the screen and it was a little challenging to control. But then I had an idea. What if I transmit the image to an external monitor wirelessly and then use the phone? So I grabbed my Hollyland Mars 300, which is an HDMI wireless transmission system. I normally use this when I need to remotely monitor a camera that's positioned too far away for me to use cables and it works great. What I did there is I mounted it to the Ronin SC and then hooked it up to the A7 III. I grabbed the monitor and then mounted my phone on a fluid head and it worked great. Now I can easily control the Ronin SC remotely using the phone and still see what I'm doing. And I found it to be a lot easier to control than using the joystick option in the app because the fluid head provided some resistance. Now a cool shot that I've had a lot of people ask me about is the infinite roll shot or the inception effect. With the Ronin SC, I have it mapped to user profile three and it's super easy to do. You'll see a drop down list right below the M3 option. Just click on it and select 3D roll 360, done. It's about as easy as I can imagine it being. Now when I wanna to switch to this mode, I tap the M button to move it to user profile three and I'm ready to go. When I'm done, I switch back to profile one and then I have my pan and tilt follow. All around the app is very nice and DJI continues to make it better and easier to use. One other cool feature that the Ronin SC has is called Active Track. So you can actually mount your phone right on the camera and then using the app, you can select a subject on the screen and the gimbal will automatically track that subject as it moves. Now that makes things a lot easier, especially when you have a subject that's moving all over the place. You can concentrate on keeping the Ronin SC stable and it will do a pretty good job at keeping it centered. Overall, I think the Ronin SC did a really good job as long as I used a smaller setup, which technically is what it was designed for. The build quality is solid and I was really happy with the performance. Even though it's a lot lighter, I used my Ronin S strap from Digital Photo so that I could still rest between takes without having to put the gimbal down. I also used the Aries Z Axis dual handles for when I wanted to eliminate some of that bounce that you'd sometimes get from walking over rough terrain. I'll put some links in the description to all the accessories that I used and I'll probably end up doing a follow up video about them. So if you're interested, hit the subscribe and notification buttons. The battery is rated for 11 hours and you can charge it using USB-C. And in my experience, I got a full charge in a little over two hours. I talked a little in the beginning about transporting the Ronin SC in the provided case and also how much I like the fact that I can lock all three axes. When I needed an even smaller solution, I would still lock the gimbal and then detach it from the handle and from the tripod feet, and I was able to easily take it in pretty much any bag that I used. Now, not every gimbal breaks down like that, and sometimes it can be a little cumbersome to transport, so I really appreciate this flexibility with the SC. I always like to share real life experience with you guys because beyond the necessary specs, these are the things that will ultimately determine whether a tool actually works for you. When I'm going out to shoot, I try to take the least amount of gear that will let me accomplish my goal. And it's great to be able to keep everything in one backpack, still have it balanced, and then quickly assemble it and start shooting. Okay, so I think the Ronin SC is an excellent option if you're looking for a small and light gimbal to use with a more compact DSLR or mirrorless camera. It's super portable and the performance was excellent. I really like how easy it is to balance together with the ability to lock all the axes in place. The app was super simple to use and has some fun features like active tracking. If you're looking for a good three axis single handle gimbal and don't need to carry too big of a rig, the Ronin SE should definitely be something that you check out. If you're looking for something a little bigger, I'll link to my Ronin S review up in the corner and in the description. Right now, the Ronin SC retails for $439, and I'll leave links in the description to where you can pick one up, as well as some of the accessories that I mentioned in this video. And there are always specials and discounts, so the links will automatically be updated with the lowest pricing. If you end up buying anything using those links, you're helping support my channel for free and allow me to create more content, so thank you very much. If this review of the Ronin SC was helpful, 
please let me know by giving it a thumbs up, tweet it, share it, and for more cinematography and videography videos, join the community by hitting the subscribe and notification buttons. You can always find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tech Ear Talk. And you know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.